Okay, so we had a couple little comments there on the on possibly uh, changing this from 220 to uh, 120. I come across another circuit online tonight that um, again, like the computer power supply, basically all you're switching in is from one side of the 220 to center the two filter caps and they just put a switch here to break that circuit either for 220 or 120 either open or close this line so if you look at this board again like I showed before you got a solder position here and you have a solder position here now on that circuit on that particular switch mode power supply you would jump these two here to change it from 220 to actually 120 volts. So, we know right now, uh, running this thing as is on 120 volts, the power supply, you know, acts weird. Get to about 12.2, 12.1 volts, sometimes 11 volts, no current, you know, it just don't work. So, um, if we jump this, here and it's stated into another circuit I just found to allow this to be this 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 board to run on 120 then technically the voltage here should rise to 13.8 volts where it is where it should be and the uh, the uh, voltage adjust on the main board over here should then function well we're going to, we're going, not we're, I'm going to make this jump. We're going to make this jump to light speed. <laughs> we're going to see if this is going to work. So, boys, this is either this power supply is going to, or going to the accept, is going to accept 110 and work as it look, work great, or it's going to blow up. It's going to do one or the other. So, let's stop talking. Let's get a piece of wire jumped on there. Get this thing put together, plug it in, and see if she explodes or not. So, stand by. Let us jump her in and uh, reassembles her here. Okay. So, I got jumper wire in. It's this yellow wire now. It goes from one side of the line to the center of both capacitors down here. It is the new jumper wire. So, now we're uh, going to try the smoke test. So, with either this is going to show 13 volts or she's going to pop some fuses back here either way let's see what happens okay folks so we've got this power supply on my variac over here right now let's turn it all the way to zero zero turn this one on Let's see if we get more than 12 volts out of her now. So right now, she's on this. Let's see what happens here. See if I keep the keep this all in shot. 20 volts, AC. turn on at 60 volts AC we have 11.7 volts let's see what happens as I, as I increase from 60 to 110 70 volts and we're already at 13.5 80 volts 14.2 19 or 90 volts 14.2 100 14.1 110 still at 14.1 and 120 so there we have it folks 
to make this uh, install this jumper wire for one for uh, 120. Here we go. Ain't that uh, ain't that interesting? So the jumper wire from the side of the line, one side of the line, to the center of both capacitors will allow the QJE PS30 SWIV to run on 120 volts, 60 hertz. Awesome. Put on adjust. 8.2 15.2 volts so I'd say we made a uh, a very good um, heck <laughs> for this power supply And you're not burning up yet. See, there's a rip down between the two capacitors down there. There's a spot that that wire got to go to, as well as over there, right here. Well, folks, you've seen it first. Right here on Radio Nut 63. I would call this a, a successful hack. <laughs> anyway guys, there you have it. This is how you uh, modify the QGE PS30 SWIV to work on 110 volts versus uh, 220. Now uh, I'm gonna head on the back. I'm gonna have to relabel it for 110. So it would never be used on 220. But uh, you can use the power supply again on 220 by just basically cutting this wire. Cut this wire, cap off both ends, and you're on 120. That's it. And I read uh, another hack today when I was looking, trying to find some information on this power supply. I found another hack for the, uh, the SEC uh, 1223. Uh, power supplies had to convert them from 110 to 220 and basically it's the same thing only in reverse instead of adding this wire in in the uh, it, there is a jumper in those power supplies a yellow wire jumper that's basically why I used yellow hair because Sam Lex uses the same yellow jumper yellow color wire in their power supply there's a jumper you you that it's already installed for 110 and basically you unplug it and it gives you 220 on those power supplies. Never knew it until today. Anyway, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the series of videos on this. Uh, on, on this. And uh, yeah, I guess the next thing is to uh, see how much current this thing can handle. Now at 220, 220 volts, uh, the thing was rated at 30 amps. So technically now we've lowered the actual operating voltage of the power supply. So in theory, in my mind, it should also reduce the amperage capacity of the power supply. So basically you're going from a 30 amp, I think, in my mind, you're probably going to drop her down to a 15 amp, in my mind. Could be wrong, but that's what I'm thinking. So she's probably a 15 amp as she sits. So, the take that in consideration, I guess. But, uh, I'm gonna hook a radio up to her here now and uh, see what uh, see what uh, she draws down on. I'm gonna put a two meter VHF mobile on her and uh, see what happens. Hey boys, we're doing the real test here now. We're gonna draw this thing down. So right now we got the radio on. Remember the other day, 
when I put the radio on this, she went from like 12 volts right on down to like, I don't know, almost 10. Right now the radio is on, and she's still 14.1 volts. So, she's on low one. That's her radio's lowest setting. Victor Ocean 1, Mike Delta Sierra testing. 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. Via 1 MDS. So that's uh, 2.4 amps run. Voltage did not drop. Let's put the radio. Low 2. Victor Ocean 1, Mike Delta Sierra test. 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. VO1 MDS. That's 3.3 amps. Power. That's about halfway. That's roughly. I don't know what mid is on these. I know these. I know these are high power radios. But uh, let's do mid. Victor Ocean One. Mike Delta Sierra testing. One two three three two one. Via one MDS. She draws five amps there. Now let's put the radio on full power. That should be maximum RF power. Victor Ocean 1, Mike Delta Sierra testing, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, via 1 MDS. And she draws 8.9 amps. Test 1, 2, 3, Victor Ocean 1, Mike Delta Sierra testing, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, via 1 MDS. And we have it. have a working power supply <laughs> awesome here we go guys if you have a DK the QJE PS30 SWIV or any of its environs well you can now convert these power supplies to 110 volts just make sure you label them on back as such anyways hope you enjoyed the videos I hope you enjoyed the heck. Remember, you've seen it here first on Reno 63. No other YouTube channel that I've come across has con has successfully converted one of these power supplies to 120 volts AC. Only me. <laughs> and now you can do it as well. Anyway, guys, all the best, and we'll talk later. Here's my new addition. JP1 for 120 volts. Anyways, we're out of here. 7 3.